Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read in April. Sorry if my voice is a little bit quieter in this video. It is late at night and this is the only time that I have to film, that I have found time to film and I actually feel really good today and I feel healthy today and I feel a little energetic at least right now. So I'm going to take advantage of that even though it is 10 o'clock at night. If you didn't know, I'm going through some health issues at the moment. So if you want to know about that, be sure to go check out that video. I also shout out some amazing booktubers. So if you want to know about more amazing booktubers, please go check that video out. But I talked about in that video how I'm having a really hard time reading physically at the moment um, because my health isn't the greatest and I don't have the energy to. So most of the books that I read in April were audiobooks and ebooks. I only read one physical book in the month of April and in total I read 16 books. Now, may seem like a lot. I know I said I haven't been reading all that much. Most of them are from two different series. Audiobooks I listened to and ebooks that were around only 200 pages. I'm actually going to be putting out a May TBR, which I've never made a TBR video ever before because I don't make TBRs because I find them intimidating, but I have a lot going on in the month of May and hopefully me making a TBR will hold me accountable to reading those books and maybe help me read more physically. So be sure to stay tuned for that video coming in the future. Hopefully this video isn't very long. I'm just gonna be glancing over a bunch of series. Most of these books are part of a series. So without further ado, let's get started. Like my other videos, I'm going to be starting from my least favorite to my favorite. My least favorite read of the month was my only physical read, and that was The Ones Who Got Away by Ronnie Lauren. Now, I did not dislike this book. I actually really did enjoy this book. This is a romance book if you cannot tell by the cover and all of the tabbies I have in my book. This is a second chance romance if you're into that trope here you go. So our two main characters on the front cover here they were secretly in a relationship back in high school and then a school shooting happened and they never talked to each other ever again after that. This book takes place six years after that for a reunion of the survivors of the school shooting. So definitely a trigger warning for shootings in general, school shootings, anything like that if you go into this book. But it's about the couple who was in a secret relationship in high school coming back together again. I really did enjoy the um, chemistry between these two characters. I really loved the romance aspect of it. The main fault that I found is that I was just looking for more more from the story, more from the climax. I didn't really find a climax in this book or like a big overarching point, you know what I mean? This book also flip flops between present day and past back when they were in high school. And I would have loved to see and read about and learn about more about them in high school. I would have loved to see scene like where they first like met and fell in love at that point. I would have loved to see that. I just wanted more from this story in general. But I did think this was a great romance read and um, had great chemistry between our two main characters. Okay, so in the month of April, I decided to continue on with the Ice Planet Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. If you didn't know what the Ice Planet Barbarian series is, this is a alien sci-fi romance series. I am total trash for them. I know none of them are five-star reads. They're not, I find typos in them all the time and they could probably be longer and have more substance to them or the characters could be more developed and they're kind of like stereotypical, but I'm just trash for them and at the time when my health was like not that great in April I just turned to these books on my phone as a quick fun read. I first read the series I want to say 2018 or 2017 I don't really remember but I started reading the series and I stopped on book 10 because there are so many books in this series and my love for them and my enjoyment for them goes kind of like fizzling out and I didn't want to feel that way towards the series so I decided to stop and wait until I was ready to read them again. The Ice Planet Barbarian series is about these women who are abducted by evil aliens and the spaceship that these evil aliens have crash land on this ice planet. The evil aliens die. The human women who were abducted live. The ice planet that they crash on is only inhabited by one tribe of Sakui people. Basically these people are blue, tall, large, muscular, horned, people. Oh, they also have tails. <laughs> They're very much like humans except for those aspects. There's only one tribe and it is mostly filled with men who have no women or wives or anything like that. Um, to survive on this planet, you need to have a symbiote in your body called a kui. 
and you can get that through killing another symbiote and putting it in their body. When you have the symbiote, they will tell you when your perfect match or your mate is near and it'll start to hum and tell you, hey, this is your lifelong partner, this is who you'll make the most fertile offspring with, that kind of thing. Basically, this is the love of your life. Here you go. So each book is basically about a mate coming together on this ice planet. I am trash for that. <laughs> I read all of these on ebook, by the way. Number 11, we have Barbarian's Choice by Ruby Dixon, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next is number 12 in the series, Barbarian's Redemption by Ruby Dixon. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one was my favorite in the series, for sure. Even better than the first one, I think. Number 13 in the series, Barbarian's Lady by Ruby Dixon. I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Number 14, we have Barbarian's Rescue by Ruby Dixon, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And lastly, right now, I am on Barbarian's Tease, number 15 in the series. So far, I am leaning towards a 3.75 stars, and I'm 80% of the way through the book, so I'm pretty sure that's gonna stick. Ruby Dixon also has another series called Ice Home. This actually is a series kind of like a companion to the Ice Planet Barbarian series. It takes place on the same planet and everything, but it's about a new group of women who crash land on this planet and even some men aliens crash land on this planet, so it's about them too. Basically a companion series. They're essentially the same thing, but I read the first book in that series I think last year called Lawrence Barbarian and I really enjoyed it so I decided to continue on with this one I listened to the audiobook for it because I listened to the audiobook of the first one this one is called Veronica's Dragon by Ruby Dixon I gave this one a four out of five stars today I actually finished listening to an audiobook it's called Richer Than Sin by none other than Megan March <laughs> I am known for reading Megan March books and not really enjoying them I actually really enjoyed this one this is the first book in a trilogy and it's all following the same two main characters so I won't know what's gonna happen to these two main characters for about four weeks till the next book comes in on my Libby app. This is a second chance romance kind of like a feud kind of like Romeo and Juliet where they don't want these two people to be together but they want to be together but no they shouldn't be together you know what I mean it takes place I want to say like 10 years after they get together the woman comes back into town and things spark between them the old flames I don't know if this is making sense but it's like a second chance romance I enjoyed this one and I really want to know what happens in the next books because nothing was really talked about because the audiobook was so short I believe it was only four or five hour audiobook so I flew through this one and I really want to know what happens in the next one. Next, we have another ebook. This is called Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. Now, this book is very well known in the romance community here on BookTube. I was kind of hesitant going into this book because I don't like cheating. <laughs> like, I don't support cheating. And I rarely, rarely think it's okay or find situations where it's okay to cheat on someone. This is a forbidden romance between a girl and her boyfriend's father. But the only reason why I enjoyed this book is because her boyfriend is a dick and like horrible. So I didn't mind that she cheated on this piece of shit of a person. And the father of her boyfriend like had his son really young. So it's actually kind of like a younger side of 30, early 30s with a early 20 year old maybe or a 19 year old I don't think it's all that weird there were some points where I thought it was really weird because Penelope Douglas didn't really talk about how like I would think that a father would kind of be like grossed out that the person he's sleeping with has also slept with his son which she never really addressed how like he maybe would think that was weird that his son has been with this person too that's the that's one of the reasons why I could not give this a five star book because I was very weirded out about that. <laughs> I loved the tension in this book, the angst in this book between these two main characters. It is a very slow burn book. They don't get together for a while there because she's dealing with her inner struggles of essentially cheating on her boyfriend. The boyfriend's father is just amazing. It's very like conflicting the way that I feel about this book. I will say one thing that I also really did not enjoy is a spoiler, but it's kind of how like the book wraps up there is like a conflict at the end and the ending of it or how the conflict is resolved happens way too fast and way too conveniently it's just like accepted it's hard to explain um if you want to know more thoughts about it dm me or something i did not feel like the ending reached its potential i feel like there should have been more 
backlash towards it. But other than that, I really enjoyed these two love interests, even though it's kind of weird. Trust me, it's good. <laughs> Next, we have another Meghan March book. We have Take Me Back. I listened to this book in one day on April 1st. So I don't remember like anything, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. Basically, it's about this couple who fell in love at a young age and got married really early into their relationship. The book has a point of view of the time when they met and they got together for the first time and then two years later you see them on the rocks and almost on the verge of a divorce. So this couple decides to go on a last minute vacation in hopes to save their crumbling marriage but while they're on this vacation complications and secrets arise that they never thought they would have to talk about or they never thought they would have to go through so you'll have to see if it saves our marriage or not. I don't remember a lot about this book. Like I said it's been basically a whole entire month since I read this book. And only in one day I listened to it in one day because it's a very short audiobook. I don't remember anything. I do remember really enjoying it though so if it strikes your fancy go ahead and pick it up. Okay we've come down to the last spot in this wrap up. Um, the next books I'm going to talk about are a whole series and my new favorite book of the year. <laughs> the first book in this series is Wait For You by Jennifer L. Armentrout writing as Jay Lynn. I love this book. This is the first book in the Wait For You series. There are six books in this series and I believe the first book is the best one. I think the last book in the series I will talk about in a second is the second best one. They kind of go up and down. Like the middle book I think is the worst book but this book is so good. The first one. I'll just talk about in depth the first book and I'll give a brief summary about the rest of them um, because they are all companion romance books. This is a book that takes place in college, in a college setting, which I love reading about people in college setting because that's my age. I originally listened to this book on my Libby app. I really enjoy the audiobook. I totally recommend the audiobook. They have all the audiobooks except for the sixth one on there. The sixth one you can only find on Audible. So yes, this is my new favorite book of the year. I love it so much. Um, basically, we have our main character named Avery. Hey, it's my name. <laughs> I never read about a girl named Avery ever. But basically we have our main character girl named Avery and she is trying to escape her past and her hometown where she is infamously known. I won't tell you how she's infamously known because you'll figure it out when you read it. But she's not known for a good reason at all. Um, so she really wants to escape her town. So she goes to a college basically across the country and hopes for a fresh start. There she meets like basically the stud of the school, Cameron Hamilton, and he turns a liking to her. He really falls for her. Each book has one of our main characters struggling through something very serious. Let me just say there is a trigger warning for sexual assault in this book, so be aware of that. Basically, it's about her trying to overcome her experiences that she's had in the past and Cameron helping her through that and discovering who she is as a person and I loved it so much. This book is my new favorite book of the year so I just am encouraging other people to go out and read it. Okay so I'm going to talk about the rest of the series really fast. The second book in this series is Be With Me. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one deals with the sister and best friend of Cameron from the first book and in this one there is a trigger warning for abuse and it's not abuse between the two main characters don't worry not that kind of thing just letting you know <laughs> the third book in the series is stay with me i also gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars so our main character girl in the second book that i just talked about has a friend that she met in college this is about that friend and her going back to her hometown and this girl is very inexperienced with guys and um, because when she was little she experienced a home fire and she is left with burn marks and scars all over her and her face. She never puts herself out there for guys and guys don't really approach her because of this scar on her face or so she says. It's about her going back to her home down for the summer, going into the bar that her mother owns and meeting the bartender there and it's her relationship with the bartender there. The next book in the series is Fall With Me. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This was my least favorite out of the series. This deals with one of the bartenders at the bar that I just talked about and a cop from the town. It's kind of like a second chance romance in a sense. There's also a stalker in the town 
that may be stalking our main character woman. I just didn't like this one as much as the other ones because it's kind of predictable and I saw the stalker coming way from the beginning. The main character man in this book uses the nickname that I hate the most in the world. I hate when someone calls someone babe as a term of endearment. So I was cringing often in this book. So that's what happened with that one. The fifth book in the series is Forever With You. I gave this one a four out of five stars. This is about two characters who you meet in the previous books and it's them coming together and the consequences of a one night stand between the two of them. And the last book in this series and my second favorite in the series is Fire in You. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Maybe I'm leaning towards a 5. We will see in the near future. I'm still stewing on it. So our main character woman, six years ago she faced a horrible tragedy that left her with scars on her body and her even being partially deaf afterwards. Back then, six years ago, her heart was broken by her childhood crush and this book takes place six years after that occurrence and her and her childhood crush meeting again and him realizing that he does have feelings for her and it's the repercussions of all of that and whether she can forgive him or even trust him after what happened. I really enjoyed this one. It's my second favorite in the series for sure. So there you have it. Those were all 16 books that I read slash listened to in the month of April. I hopefully will read more physically in the month of May. That is my goal. I have a few upcoming releases coming out in May. Fingers crossed that I read more physically because that's what I want. <laughs> Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to because I would love to start up a conversation with you about them down in the comments below. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye!